Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spartan Stadium, where tonight the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds welcome in the Cary Blue Devils. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook, alongside Kelsey Beimer and our entire WSN crew. And Kelsey, welcome to week one for you. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. It's a gorgeous evening for some football, 63 degrees, sunny out, and I'm excited to see a good game between Cary and LCC yeah, here. Yeah, great night for football. Let's take a look at both these squads. Yeah. Cary comes in 0-2, Kelsey. They're average. 15 points. It's no secret what they do. They lost a lot on graduation, but they continue the same system. They run, run, run the ball. Exactly. And when you have a, a running back like Eli Steen, why wouldn't you? Six foot one, 240 pounds, 205 yards on the season so far. Yeah, and he runs behind a big line. Let's look yeah. at that offensive line. Yeah, so on this uh, line for Kerry, we have uh, Dawson Birchnaw. Cameron Pinwell, Garrett Bowes, Gavin Snyder, and Levi Bowling. Yeah, and they'll go 225, 225, 255. So a great big offensive line. Trying to get that first week one or that first win of the year, 0 and 2. For Lima Central Catholic, it's no secret. They've had to replace some legendary players there and Carson Parker, Billy Burke, some guys who were all-time greats there. But they're doing it behind a young sophomore, Brady Parker. Yep. Uh, the quarterback having a good year. He's 18 to 38. They're one and one. They lost that first game to Shawnee, but they bounced back with a huge win over over their rival, Delphi St. John's. They did. So it would be huge if they could come out with a win here. I think it's going to be a really competitive game. We'll see who can get their running game going in. I think that will be a big determination here for who wins the yeah, game. Yeah, let's get this one underway. The T-Birds win the toss, and they elect to receive. So we are underway. Week three in the Ohio High School football season. And a fair catch. Oh, he, I thought he made a fair catch. He raised his hand up, but the official let him take the ball and go across the 32-yard line. That's where the T-Birds will start on offense. They are led by number seven, Brady Parker. He is a sophomore quarterback, 18 of 38, 264 yards, three touchdowns. And the young man has a good running back behind him in Matthew Quatman. He's got 34 carries on the year for 156 yards and a touchdown. And I really believe that Lima Central Catholic is going to have to control that line of scrimmage against this big defensive line from Kerry. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And like you said, Matthew Quatman, senior running back, I think he's one of the biggest leaders on this team, and he's doing a lot for him running, catching, just being an overall leader. So he'll be a, a big name to watch for this game. So we'll go first and 10. T-Bird's on offense. From the 32-yard line, Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's got a single back on the left, and he's got one in motion. Parker's going to hand the ball off to the first man up, and he gets to the line, and that is number four, Matthew Quatman. Gain of about a yard, so that'll make it up second and nine. 11.46 to go. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium on what some would say is an absolute beautiful night for football, and I'm one of those. 60-some degrees, yep. sunny sky. It feels like October, Kelsey, but it's a September night. It does. This is the perfect night for football. And on that tackle there, there was a couple of defenders there, but I saw number 48, Mace Puckett, their senior, 5'11", 185. So he has 18 tackles on the season, so definitely another one to watch. Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's got a single back off to his left shoulder. He's got a man in motion. He's going to pitch it back around the right side, trying to get to the edge and taken down. That was number one for the birds. Yep, I think number three, Logan Summit on the tackle there. Lawson Flores for the Birds, the sophomore halfback. That'll bring up third and seven, 10.58 to go here from Spartan Stadium. Nice crowd on tap tonight. There is a nice crowd, yeah. Yeah, home size pretty much full up, and uh, Kerry brought quite a few people. Yeah, I'm surprised for how far but away Kerry is. As far drive, but they, they yeah. showed up in numbers tonight, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a great night for football. So Absolutely. here we go, third and six. Ball's on the 35. Parker's in the gun. He's going to take the snap. He's going to roll left. He's, going to, he's under heavy pressure. He's going to throw down the middle, and the reception is made. And if they mark it where the ball was caught, that's probably going to be a Lima Chevy first down, and I believe that's what they're calling it. Yep, it looks like it. Yeah, and I like getting Brady Parker's passing game going. That will open up the running for Matthew Quatman. And he, he's shown that he can throw the ball. So yeah, if they can get that going, it'll help he's a He's a lot. really good athlete that when he gets out in space, he can create things. Right. And that, that uh, pass was thrown into a couple of our, our defenders there. So good completion. Our Lima, or our, excuse me, our first down sponsor is Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevy and Cadillac dealer in the great Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. So Parker's in the gun. He's got two to the right. He's got a single back off to his right shoulder. He's going to hand the ball off to Quatman. Quatman goes across the left side for a nice pickup of about five yards. So there you see the Bird offensive line flexing that muscle. Let's take a look at that Lima Central Catholic offensive line, Kelsey. Yeah, we have Don McKee, Brady Malcolm, Andrew Baldoff, 
Chris Kernovich and Gianni McKee. Always want to give the offensive linemen some love. They're watching the game. They want to hear that name. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. The, the, both, the lines on both sides make such a huge effort. Oh, absolutely. Huge, yeah. Parker's in the gun. We'll go second and three on the 49. Birds at midfield. Parker's in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. It's quarterback run. He goes right up the middle, and they're going to pick up another Lima Chevy first down. So there you see the athleticism of Brady Parker. The 6'3 sophomore takes it himself. And uh, big brother Carson would be proud of him on that oh, play. Oh, he absolutely would. <laughs> yeah, and we were just talking about the lines. They made a good hole there for Brady come right up and got the first down there. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. So the Birds on the move. They've crossed midfield. We're at first and 10 from the 47. Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right, to the left. Looks across the middle, and he throws down the middle. And Quatman oh. almost makes an incredible one-handed catch. Matthew Quatman had split the seams, Kelsey, and almost made a spectacular catch. Yeah, you're right. He had one hand on it, almost pulled it in. That would have been an incredible catch. And there you saw the time that Brady Parker, when he's given time, can yep. find the receivers. And that was a tough pass, but he put it the only place he could have. Exactly. So that will bring up second and 10 from the 47-yard line. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium on a Sunsplash Saturday night, not a Friday night yeah. game. They moved this game to Saturday. Well, they moved it from 4 to 6. Right. And uh, we'll get out of here in time to watch the Buckeyes yeah. tonight. <laughs> So Parker's in the gun. He's got one off to his left. He's got a man in motion. He's going to pitch back to the back in the backfield, and he's going to be taken down for a loss. That was number two, Michael Quatman, the sophomore, just got caught up in numbers, and the carry defensive line just reacted and really gang tackled. Yeah, that was really great. There was a couple of defenders there, but one of them I saw Carter Bain, their starting lot. A uh, linebacker had 13 tackles, three for loss in the season, so he did it right there. Carter Bame all over the field, like you said, with 13 tackles this year in two games. So young man playing in good position there for tackles in the linebacker position. They, they, you look down at Kerry, they, they're really big and physical. They, they, they're they very are. big, and they've got huge numbers across the sideline. Yep. So here comes Parker in the gun. He's got one in the slot. He's got a single receiver to the left and to the right. He's got a back off to his right shoulder, and we're going to get a stoppage in play. Lima Central Catholic is going to take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium with 8.14 to go. We are knotted at zero. Lima Central Catholic on the move from the 48-yard line. Kelsey, we look at Lima Central Catholic averaging 16 a game. It's the problem they've had is with the defense. They've given up 23 points a game. So hoping to correct some mistakes tonight and keep it on the bright side of the offense. Absolutely. Parker's in the gun. He's got one to the left. He's going to keep it himself. He looks down this right side. He's throwing long. He's got a man out there, and oh. he just overshoots Lawson Flores, and he had him. He had him beat, Kelsey. Yep, he did. He was open. Unfortunately, the pass was just a little bit off there, but Lawson was open down the field, and that would have been a touchdown if the ball would have fallen in his hands. Yeah, Kelsey, I love to see when coaches call a timeout, and they come out of the timeout with a play just like that, and they draw it up, and it, 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 that was on target. That's a touchdown. So yep. uh, those are things that they can correct. So Absolutely. Central Catholic in pump formation from 4th and 14 from the 48. carrie has got one man deep at the 20. They'll keep one up at the 30. Snap is back. Punt is up, and it is a good one. Is It knocks it back to the 15 to the 10. They're going to be oh. able to down that about the 5-yard line. A fantastic job by the Lima Central Catholic special teams. Oh, my goodness, Kelsey carey has got a long way to go. Yeah, that was a beautiful moment by quarterback Brady Parker. He does the punting duties as well for the Thunderbirds, and, man, that was a good one. Yeah, a lot of times in small schools, the quarterback does a lot of things, yep. and you're right there. <laughs> Brady Parker, an excellent athlete. So the Cary Blue Devils come out 0-2. They average 15 points a game. Defensively, they give up 20.5 a game. They are 0-2, led by head coach John Mershman, and they'll be led on the field by number 18 quarterback Kyler Bowes, a 6'2", 200-pound junior. He's got 17 carries on the year, and that's what you're going to see Kerry do. He's 8-23 for 82 yards and four interceptions. They've got to correct that tonight. Yep. 
So Bose is under center. He's going to throw off to the left, and he's got a man out there at the five-yard line, and he gets around the corner, and he is going down the sidelines, down to the 35, and they're going to stay. He steps out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. So as, as much as I'm talking about them running the ball, here they come out with a pass, and they get about a 26-yard pickup. Yep, and that was Trip Phoenix, sophomore, 5'10", 150, and he is a fantastic receiver for the Blue Devils. He has three receptions for 52 yards on the season, one touchdown catch, and he's going to be a name we're talking about a lot tonight. Well, yeah, look, Trip Phoenix, when you only have three catches and you're averaging <laughs> right. well over 20 yards a catch and you saw the speed of the young man they're going to get him involved in this game plan yep so Bose will go under center he's got two back it is a power eye formation and you're going to get a big heavy dose of Eli Steen the 6'1 240 pound senior who is a battering ram and here he comes right to the line of scrimmage and that is one thing LCC is going to have to do and we look at LCC's key to the games and it is be physical and limit mistakes and the last one was tackle Yep. Yeah, you know, Coach Palti knows they've got to tackle in the open space. Yeah, they can't let those uh, running backs and receivers get open space because just as we saw in the last play, Trip Phoenix, if he gets in the open field, they're gone. Who, so Yeah, who uh, might be the coolest name in football, Trip oh, Phoenix. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I thought the same thing when I got that roster. <laughs> I'm looking at that roster last night, and I'm like, they got some really cool names yeah. right here. <laughs> so Bose is in the gun. He's got two in the backfield. He's got a fullback and a tailback. Eli Steen is in the top of the eye. Bose is going to pass the ball, goes across the middle, and he's got his man out there. It's a reception made at the 40, and a really nice tackle there by Michael Quadman, and he tackles number 10, Trip Phoenix. Again, Trip Phoenix with the ball. We're going to be saying that all night. Yep, I was a little nervous there because number six, Lucas Smith Hayward, he slipped, and I thought that's who he was throwing to. Thankfully, Trip Phoenix was there behind it to grab the catch and get the first down. And you look at the game plan here tonight. He's thrown the ball twice in yeah. the last three plays. He's thrown eight eight times in the first two games, and here they come out firing the ball. Right, yeah, definitely not what we were expecting. No, not Probably at what all. what LCC coaching wasn't expecting either. Exactly. Some of these carry players have got those old-style face masks, which are really cool. Yeah, that so is cool. Bose is in the gun. He's got a back to his left. He's got three receivers to the right. Bose looks to pass. He's going to keep it himself. He's under heavy pressure. He dances around, and he's going to be taken down in a big-time play by Matthew Quatman. Matthew Quatman comes out of his safety position and nails Bose in the backfield. Yep, that was a fantastic tackle by Matthew Quatman, and that's what they need when they're going to go on those pass plays there. Grab a couple sacks, maybe ruffle their confidence a little bit. That was fantastic by the LCC defense. And it'll be interesting to see if the if the passing game doesn't get fired up for Carey if they go back to that traditional run game yeah. and, and really, really try to pound the ball. But what we're seeing so far, four plays, two run, two pass. I really like the balance. I do too. Kyler Bose is in the gun. He's got Eli Steen behind him. Eli Steen, the 6'1", 240-pound senior, directly behind him. He's got a man in motion. Bose takes the snap. He's going to pitch, fake the pitch, and he's going to keep it himself. He goes around the left side, and he'll get a gain of about two yards, which will bring up third and about 14. And that is exactly, Kelsey, what Lima Central Catholic wants to do to carry is put them in third and long. When you have a team that runs the ball 90% of the time, third and 14 seems like an eternity. Exactly, yeah. And typically with that run-heavy offense – you would think that would be a good thing, but Kerry's been throwing it pretty good tonight, so we'll see what Absolutely. they can do. But still, regardless, great job at LCC. This is right where you want to. Yeah, we're third and 14 from the 38. you got to believe Trip Phoenix is going to make an appearance here in this, oh, uh, yeah. in this play here. So let's see what Bose and the Kerry Blue Devils offense does. Bose is in the gun. He's got Eli Steen off to his right side. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to take the snap. He's going to roll right. He's looking downfield. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to throw the ball long down the right side. He's got a man out there, and the reception is made at the 20-yard line. An unbelievable catch by number 10, Trip Phoenix. I called it, Kelsey. Yep, I called it. You called it. That was <laughs> unbelievable. There was about four or five players right in that little pack there. It was a little bit underthrown, but Trip came back to it, had a fantastic catch. And they're heading up toward the red zone. Kelsey, that was almost a Hail Mary pass. It was. And really, we only see that in the end zone, but we see it at the 20-yard line. And Trip Phoenix just went above everybody. And caught right, it, it worked. <laughs> so that'll put the Cary Blue Devils in great position. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Bose goes under center. And now we've got triple running backs behind him. He's going to pitch back the ball, hand it off to number 24, and that is Eli Steen, the 6'1", 240. And I had said he was a senior. He is only a junior, Kelsey. So the, oh, is that right? Yeah, my goodness, he is a big kid for a junior. Yeah, and with his 2 of 5 on the season, he averages about 5 a carry. So that little dink and dunk, push your way up the field, that's what works for them. Absolutely. And we'll probably see that a lot tonight as well. 
And you look at uh, carry their keys to the game, and obviously number one is run the ball and stop the run. Yep. Just basic principles of football. Right. That's what happens when you have two good running backs, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. Here goes the Blue Devils. They take it right up the middle. This is big number 48, and that is Mace Puckett as he is struggling for yards and carrying people. Number 48, Mace Puckett, the 5'11", 185-pound sophomore gets about five yards, and yeah. there you see Carey flexing that offensive line a little bit. Oh, yeah, they were grouped up there for a while, and they just kept pushing and going and grabbed a couple extra yards from that, which is always fantastic if you can do that. And that'll bring up another third down situation, third and eight from the 13. Carey really six plays, three run, three pass, and uh, again, we'll <laughs> we said that we thought coming into this game that we would see primarily running the ball, Yeah. and uh, they have really done a nice job of mixing it up. So Bose goes under center. He's going to hand the ball off, and that LCC line is dominant right there. And there yep. you see exactly what the Lima Central Catholic defensive line can do. And they're going to say the ball got oh. – did it fall out? Lima Central Catholic saying they recovered a fumble. But the officials are going to say no, he was down on the play. So Kerry will go fourth and two from the 13. And let's see what they do. Looks, looks like, like they're, they're bringing gonna, some yeah. people out. They're going to go – yeah, I think they're going to – Field goal. No? Yeah, they're going to try a yep. field goal here. So Carey takes it all the way down to the 16-yard line. This is number 20, Nathan Geary. with Oh, bad snap. He gets the hold down. The ball is up, and it is no good. Goes off to the left. So Lima Central Catholic with a win-win right there as they hold the Blue Devils to nothing. With 2.39 to go, we'll step aside. 0-0 zero, zero on the Spartan scoreboard. So the Cary Blue Devils take it all the way down the field, take it to the 16-yard line, and that's where they are thwarted by the LCC defense as they miss the field goal. And Lima Central Catholic will take over first and 10 from the 16-yard line. Brady Parker is in the gun. He's got one to the left. He's got a man in motion, two receivers to his right. Parker's going to keep it himself as he goes through the line and picks up about four yards. Yeah, Dash Puckett and Mace Puckett both there on the tackle. So Puckett and Puckett, the yeah. law firm from Cary, <laughs> make the tackle. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium on a beautiful Saturday, September night here in the Bean City. And the Birds hosting the Cary Blue Devils. Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his left. He's got a single back to the left and one in the slot position who goes in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to the first runner, and that is Matthew Quatman. And Matthew Quatman does a little bit of wiggle there and has a nice pickup of about five yards. So there you see the strength of Matthew Quatman. Did you see how he turned a little bit and got the extra yardage? Yeah, I had a little spin move there. <laughs> tackled did. by Lucas Smith Hayward. So that, this is what they do push the ball up. I think on both sides we're going to see a lot of these little runs yeah, like that. Yeah, we're, we're going to see a quick game tonight because they both like to control the ball and they run the ball effectively. So. Yep. Here go the Burns, third and two from the 28. A big play here on third down. Brady Parker's in the gun. He's got a single receiver off to the right. Now he's in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to Quatman, and Quatman in a little bit of wiggle room, oh. and he's going down the right side. Matthew Quatman at the 50. He's at the 45 to the 40, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Matthew Quatman does his thing, and you saw the spin move again, and it paid off for the Birds. Yep, it worked. He had some open field and was heading that way. Unfortunately, there was about four or five blue doubles <laughs> there. Trip Phoenix showing up on offense, or defense, too, got the tackle there. I don't know that anybody's going to outrun Trip Phoenix today. I don't I think so, no. <laughs> Trip Phoenix, the fantastic sophomore <laughs> from Cary, is all over the field tonight. But Matthew Quatman shows you why he is the best back in that backfield. Yep. So it'll be first and 10 from the 30 for the Birds. They are on the move. 102 to go here in the first quarter. Brady Parker's in the gun. He's flanked off to the left by Eddie White. Parker's looking downfield, throws off to the left. He's got his man out there. And it's a reception made by number one, Lawson Flores, the 5'9", 158-pound sophomore. Sophomore makes a great catch and run, and he's going to make another Lee's famous, or excuse me, another Lima Chevy Cadillac first down. Lee's Famous Recipe is our scoreboard sponsor. Yes. So <laughs> just a couple sponsors, but I'm going right, to screw Right, right, <laughs> yeah. And that was a fantastic back, or route by Lawson there. He went right along the side there, caught the ball, 
gained a couple after that and was able to get him exactly what they needed. And Kelsey, you see as, as, as Brady Parker gets comfortable, how he gets in a rhythm back there, and he's just finding those open receivers. Here goes Quatman up the middle, and he is hit hard by big number 48, Mace Puckett. Mace Puckett is everywhere tonight. Yeah, I've been lucky with WSN to see all of LCC's games this year, and I can see the confidence growing in Brady Parker right, being right. over a game. He, he stands in the pocket. He's big. He's got a big frame. He's 6'3". Yep. He's got a great arm. He just looks across the field, and he just looks comfortable tonight. He really does against a big-time defensive line from Kerry. He does, and like you said, only a sophomore. I'm really excited he's, to see what he does. Yeah, going he's forward. only getting He's going to be good. <laughs> he's going to be real good. So... Parker's in the gun. He's flanked off to the right by Matthew Quatman. He's got two receivers to his right. And he's got a single receiver in the slot who goes in motion. Parker takes the gun. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to roll to his right. He's looking downfield. He's under heavy pressure, and he's going to throw to the corner of the end zone and just throws it away. Yeah. And a really smart move there by Brady Parker, knowing he's got more downs to play, and I like the move by the young sophomore. Yeah, that was extremely smart. There was a receiver in the area, but he threw it more out of bounds, which was a smart thing to do because there was defenders all around. Right. You don't want to to get a turnover yeah, at this he position. Knew, he knew if he put it where he put it, it wasn't going to be intercepted. That's a great call, yep. Kelsey. Yep. So that'll bring up second and 10 from the 20. 18 seconds to go in the first quarter here. Still knotted at zero. Carey comes in looking for that first win of the year. Parker's in the gun. He's got a receiver off to the left side in single coverage. He's got trips to the right. He's in the gun. He's going to take the ball. Looks across the field, throws right down the middle, and it's oh, it's oh. deflected. Matthew Quabbin with the inter with the touchdown. Oh my goodness, did you see that, Kelsey? The ball gets tipped by two players, and Matthew Quabbin comes out of nowhere. Touchdown, birds! That was fantastic. That's one of those things. You're in the right place, right time. <laughs> ball gets tipped off. Defenders all around, and Matthew Quabbin's right there to pull did, it in for the touchdown. Did you see the look when Matthew Quabbin caught it? Yeah. He looked around like, oh my gosh, yeah. I just caught a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Wow. Brady Parker to Matthew Quatman for the touchdown reception, and the Birds take a 6-0 lead on the Cary Blue Devils. And the Cary folks are as stunned as we are. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew Quatman is on for the extra point. It'll be held by Michael Quatman. Snap is back. Hold is good. Kick is up. And it is good. So with 14 seconds to go in the first quarter, the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds march down the field, and a Brady Parker to Matthew Quabbin strike gives them the 7-0 lead. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium where Brady Parker and Matthew Quabba connect on a acrobatic circus catch, Kelsey, yeah. that we were both stunned. I thought when it went off two other defenders that it was just going to roll out of bounds and Matthew Quabman just picks it out of the air and the birds are up 7-0. Yeah, it's just like, oh, ball's in my hand. <laughs> Touchdown. We'll take it. So it's been an exciting first quarter, to say the least. Lima Central Catholic will kick off deep back for Carey is number six, Lucas Smith Hayward, and number 18, Kyler Bowes. So they'll try to get back in this one real quick. And the kick is up, and it goes down the right side. And excuse me, that's number six, it's Lucas Smith Hayward, as he fields it at about the 10, brings it up to the 25, and a nice return for the Blue Devils as he brings it back to the 35-yard line, a return of about 30 yards and carries in business. Yep, that was a great return by Lucas Smith Hayward, another name I think we'll see a lot tonight, especially back on the receiving end. So we'll see what Kerry can do, get their offense going. If they're going to continue with the passing play, stick with the run, we'll it, see. You know, Kelsey, you, you look at this Kerry program, and last year they were 10-3. and three. They won the, 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 uh, the, the Northern. 10 league. They yep. were 7 0 in the league. They went to the playoffs. They, typically, a great, great program. You got to believe they're going to get it together sometime this year. 100%. Yeah, and they started out 0 2 last year as well. Then they won 10 in a row. Absolutely. So in the same exact position. So Bose is in the gun. He's got a single back off to his right. He's going to bring it to the right side, keep it himself, and tries to cut the corner and gets a nice chunk of change there. And he takes it up to the 40 yard line for a gain of about five yards. Yeah, that was fantastic blocking by Kerry there. I didn't see who got the tackle for LCC, but there was people all around, and he was able to get a couple extra yards there from the blocks. Yeah, you saw Eli Steen was was in the backfield with him, and Steen went around his right shoulder and led the block. And yep. look, when Eli Steen, 6'1", 240, is coming at you, you, you better get low. Yeah. You better get real low. Absolutely. So it uh, looks like there's a timeout on the field, but uh, 
Yeah. With, oh, no. At, excuse me. The quarter is yep. over. We're getting so excited. We're not even paying attention. <laughs> so after one quarter of play from Spark Stadium, the Lima Central Cathy T-Birds lead 7-0. We'll be back for second quarter action right after these messages. Tonight's first down sponsor is Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevy and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. So here we go, Kelsey, first and five from the 40-yard line. Carry on the march here to start the second quarter. Birds lead seven to nothing. Bose is under center. He's got two backs in the backfield with him. He's going to throw off to the left side. He's picked off, picked off by Matthew Quabbin, and he's going to take it into the house as he gets to the goal line, and he scores. Matthew Quabbin, touchdown number two. That was fantastic. He had two receivers out there on the edge, and Matthew Quabbin went up right in between the middle of them and took that ball straight back to the end. So that was fantastic. Kelsey, that right there is time spent in the weight room. He went between those two receivers, yep. just bullied them, got the ball, and takes it to the the house. What a fantastic play. Matthew Quatman is just making circus plays right oh, now. Oh, yeah. It's his second touchdown of the night, by the way. <laughs> one on offense, one on defense. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How many kids can say they scored an offensive touchdown and a defensive touchdown in the same game? Right. Birds lead 13 to nothing. <laughs> and he's going to kick the extra point. Here yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Quatman for mayor. He can do it all. <laughs> so here we go with 11.51. And Matthew Quatman with the extra point. Snap is back. Hold is good. And the kick is up. And it is no good. So the only thing Matthew Quatman hasn't done right tonight is misses the field or the extra point. But we'll give him a break on that. Right, yeah. With 11.51 to go, the Birds lead 13 to nothing. And we'll be back with second quarter action right after these messages. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium, where the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds have taken a 13-0 lead, and they've scored two touchdowns in the last 30 seconds, yep. one offensive, one defense, and Matthew Quadman has them both. Yeah, Matthew Quadman has to be on a high right now. <laughs> and that's the thing. One thing that I've put so much emphasis on in football is momentum, and LCC has oh, it right absolutely. now. So it's going to be huge for Kerry to get the ball here, see if they can drive up the field like they did their first possession. Unfortunately, it resulted in a missed field goal. But if they can get a drive here, that yeah, would be and, fantastic and, and for you, them. You wonder, Kelsey, with the way that that last play happened, you wonder if Kerry gets conservative now and runs yeah. the ball a little more. So let's just see what Kyler Bowes and that offensive does. Maybe they'll lean on that offensive line a little bit, maybe control the ball a little bit and use some of the clock. So the catch is made at the 10-yard line. He's going to bring it up to the 25 to the 30, and he'll be taken down right around the 30-yard line. They'll call it the... 31 yard line and that's where Kyler Bowes and the Cary Blue Devils will take over. Yeah, Danny, like you said prior, I think that's a really good point. Does Cary go back to what they're comfortable with here, the run game, and we'll see if it can work for him. Or yeah. is that what LCC is expecting? Yeah, we'll see what they decide. Join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garluck each week as we discuss local football matchups, Buckeye football, and sports all across the state of Ohio in WSN's newest podcast, Three Wise Men. So here comes Bose and the Blue Devils as they're down 13 to nothing. Bose is going to pitch the ball back to Steen. Steen's going to try to get across the 30 to the 33, a pickup of about two yards. So e here's the thing. Eli Steen is a big kid, and, and he's not got a lot of speed. He's going to pound the ball up the middle, so they really got to rely on that offensive line, and the Birds are doing a great job of just running to the ball. Exactly, yeah, and that was a great tackle there by Gianni McKee, the senior, six foot, 285 pounds, who's a good matchup for Eli, and also Mylon Callens was in on that tackle as well. That'll bring up second and eight from the 32-yard line. And Bose goes under center. He's got a full back out, backfield with him. He's going to pitch the ball back. Tries to get around the left side, and no going. Yes, he does. He does sweep through and picks up about five. They had him in the backfield, they Kelsey, did. and I, that's why I said I didn't think he was going to go anywhere, and he finally turned the corner, and there you saw Trip Phoenix with his speed. Boy, and he was a step away from breaking that one. Yep, he was. He was broke a tackle, and I thought, oh, no, this could get ugly. Going straight <laughs> to the, for LCC, but thankfully they ran him out of bounds. But, yeah, that first broken tackle was really good. They were able to get a couple more yards out of that play. bring up second and five from the 35. And the officials are going to stop play here for something as they're going to come together. 
Kerry comes in rushing the ball 180 yards per game, and they pass the ball 82 yards per game. So big contrast in what they want to do, and we've seen them throw the ball four, five, six times tonight. We sure have. Uh, one was a disaster play, but uh, they're going to stick with their guns, and they're going to run the ball here. And here they come right up the middle. And again, this is big number 24, Eli Steen. Grabbed a couple there, a whole host of Thunderbirds there for the tackles. Not enough for the first down, though. Uh, it's going to bring up fourth and three from the 35. And they are not bringing anybody else in. You wonder what they're going to do here from the 38-yard line. And, yep, they're they bringing the special teams. They're going to punt the ball away. So a great job by the T-Bird defense as they hold them to four downs from the 38-yard line. So a great opportunity for the T-Birds to put more points on the board here with 10-19 to go until halftime. And a bad snap, and the kick is up, and a great job of getting the kick away, and a great kick as it hits the turf and bounces, and they are in business, and they are going to down it at the 7-yard line. So Carey finally gets some momentum as they have the birds pinned deep at the 7-yard line with 10.06 to go until halftime. That was a, two fantastic punts we've seen on the night. Yeah, They've been able right. to roll inside the 10, 5-yard line. How important are special teams right now in a right. critical game like this? You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 a month. Down, excuse me, download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium on a beautiful Saturday fall evening. Temperatures in the mid-60s, light breeze. It's sweater weather, Kelsey. It now is. it's supposed to get warmer next it week. It is, so. which I'm not looking forward to. I love the fall. So today is like my ideal day. Today's, today's your day. Yep. So here comes Brady Parker in the birds. He's got one receiver to the right, one off to his left. He's got a single back in motion. He's going to fake the pitch. He's in the end zone. He's going to fire deep down the right side. He's got his man. Reception is made. He goes across the 20 for another Lima Chevy first down. So the reception made by number 10. Khalil Simpson, I believe, makes the reception for the Birds. I think that was, was that 30, Kate? Was Falk? it 30? Okay. I believe so, yeah. It's way across the field and yeah, I'm old, <laughs> so a good pick up on your part. Yeah, but that was a really safe play there. Just drop it right outside. They thought they was going to go for the run, and Caden was able to pick up some uh, yards there. And there you saw Brady Parker do a great job of checking off his receivers and finding another guy on the right side and getting a nice pass across the field. Yep. So Parker is in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to Quatman. Quatman slips, uh, and he tried to make a cut right at the line of scrimmage, and he just slips on the turf and falls down for a gain of maybe, maybe half a yard. Yeah, I think that was Dash Puckett there on the tackle. Oh no, so maybe number 30. A great opportunity here for Carey. They've got the birds back deep from the 23-yard line, second and 11. Yep, and that was Carter Bame on the tackle there. I apologize. He has 13 on the season, one interception, and three tackles for losses. 9.07 to go. LCC leads 13 to nothing on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his left. He's got a single back to his left. He's got one in motion. He's going to pitch the ball back, tries to get around the left side. He gets to the 30, to the 35, and he is taken down on the play, and that is number two for the Birds, Michael Quatman on the carry, and there you see the speed of Michael Quatman. Yep, absolutely, and they use that play with Michael a lot. I believe he has nine rush attempts on the season, 45 yards, so that's one they use a lot and one that he's pretty good at, I'd say. 8.49 to go until halftime. Birds lead 13 to nothing as they're on the drive again. This drive started from the seven-yard line. So they've gained 30 yards here in about four plays. So a great job by the T-Bird offense. Yeah, this will be important for the Blue Devils to get a stop here. You don't want to get the score two out of Yeah, we're right reach. out. Yeah, absolutely, especially in the first half. And there, big number 64 for the T-Birds. He moved, and that'll be a <laughs> penalty. Brady Malcolm uh, will get a penalty for the birds and that'll back it up five yards false start first Not, penalty of the yeah, night I was right? say that, that, yeah it's been a clean game so far it has. a really good game so far by both squads when it comes to penalties so the first one of the night and that was one of the keys by coach Palti for LCC limit mental mistakes you don't want to keep getting those penalty yards push yourself backwards when they're already doing pretty good here so 
Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers off to his right. He's got a single back on his right shoulder. He's going to roll to the right. He looks downfield. He throws to the right side, and he's got a man out there and a lot of contact and no flag on the play. The carry sideline wanted offensive pass interference. His intended target lost in Flores. There was a lot of contact, but I think it was the right call. Both players, you know, attempting to go for the ball. I do too. Yeah, a lot of contact there. The ball wasn't extremely close to him. Yeah, it probably could have gone either way. I don't know that there's enough to to call a flag there. So that'll bring up second and 15 from the 37 with 8.44 to go. I love the aggressive nature of Lima Central Catholic right oh, now, letting Brady Parker just throw the ball around the yard, and he's doing a great job of locking in on receivers. He sure is. So he's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to fake the pitch, and he goes back to the left side. He's got Matthew Quatman out there at the 30. Quatman at the 35, to the 40, to the 45. Quatman cuts it upfield to the 50. He avoids a the rush. There's a flag on the field. He's at the 50, to the 45, to the 40. Matthew Quatman up the right side, and he's going to be taken down, and another flag comes down. So two flags on the play. Uh, let's see what they're going to call here. Yeah, and I, I just want to say that all comes back to a fantastic – block by his brother Michael Quatman there in the backfield he had a fantastic block let Matthew up the field and he crossed the entire field all the way up and right now Michael and Matthew Quatman are a real problem for Kerry because they don't have any answers and the Quatman brothers are just running wild yep and it looks like it's going to be called back so You're going to say a block in the back against Lima Central Catholic. And typically when you get those screen passes like that, you get a guy downfield who gets a little eager and pushes in the back there. So yep. mistake made. It's only the second penalty tonight by right. the Birds. Unfortunately, though, unfortunately, it was a big play. Right. And even though it gets called back, it still feels good to have a play break open and run downfield. Sure, absolutely. Unfortunately, it get called back, but gives them maybe a little bit of confidence knowing that they can do it. Bring up second and 15 from the 47. Brady Parker in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. He's going to hand the ball off. This is Quatman, and Quatman has hit hard at the line, and he is met right, a, right away by big number 86 yep. for Carey, and I don't have him on my roster, Kelsey. That's I, Reed Blinkmeyer. Okay. Senior tackle, 5'11", 200 pounds. He was the first one to get to him. And I've got him on my starting lineup, but I don't have him on the overall lineup oh, right really? here. So I'm not uh -oh. real sure what that's about. We'll write him in. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I'll bring up third and three from the 44. So a huge play for Carey's defense to try to get a stop here. Parker's in the gun. He's got a single back off to his left. He's going to throw to the right side, and he's got his man out there. Reception made by Michael Quatman, and he gets the first down easy in the open space. So a great pitch and catch from Brady Parker to number two, Michael Quatman. And look, when you get Michael Quatman and Matthew Quatman in single coverage on the outside by the boundary, it's almost impossible to stop those guys. Oh, yeah. Michael was pretty much wide open out there, just ran right all along the backfield there, was able to get it. And once he's in the open field, he's running. So. Yeah, and a great play design by Coach Palti as he gets Quatman in the open space. Yep. And the birds pick up another Lima Chevy first down. So 7.22 to go, first and 10 from the 46 as the birds march across midfield, trying to put more points on the board. They're up 13 to nothing. Parker's going to keep it himself as he goes up the middle and gets a gain of about three yards. So nice job there by the carry defensive line. Yep, definitely. And the LCC offense has been extremely efficient. I mean, their first uh, possession out, they punted it. But since then, they've had two touchdowns, and they've been driving down the field. So really good by the LCC offense. Absolutely. Keeping that carry offense and that big offensive line off the field. Yep. And, again, we're going to say it. You know, you and I have talked to this broadcast. We are just shocked by the way Kerry's offense has thrown the ball, and we've, we haven't seen that all year. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, again, LCC the beneficiary of an interception and a pick six. So here come the birds. Parker's in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to hand the ball up to Matthew Quatman on the right side, and Matthew Quatman wiggles and jiggles for a gain of about five yards. And, boy, he's really tough between the tackles. Oh, he's so good. And, again, another host of people on the tackle there. Dash Puckett was one of them. We'll be saying his name a lot tonight. <laughs> Dash but, is everywhere. I mean, that's all you need to do, just dink and dunk a couple yards up every time, and it, it's working for him. Clock continues to run, 6.15 until halftime. Birds up 13 to nothing on the drive again. 
And you can just see the confidence from Brady Parker as this yeah. offense is getting better and better each week. And that was a huge win for them last week against their rival, Delphi St. John's. Albeit they only scored 14 points, still a great effort by the Birds. Oh, for sure. There goes Michael Quatman in motion, and Parker's under duress. He gets it out to Quatman. There's a flag on the play, and the ball is loose. And I don't know that he, they're going to call it a reception. Flag is on the play. We'll see what that is. Yeah, that was a fantastic job by uh, Brady Parker there because Lewis Watkins was hunting him down in the backfield. So good job for him to get it off. So but unfortunately, yeah. flag on the play. Officials get together, and they're conferring the play. And we got another block in the back by the LCC T-Birds. So that is the third penalty night for the T-Birds, and two of them uh, really killing drives here Yeah. with 5.48 to go. Coach Pulte not going to be happy with that. And that'll push the ball back to the 50-yard line. We're about 14 for the first down here. Yeah, I was going to say third, and that makes it third and 13. At the 50-yard line, 5.48 to go. Birds lead 13 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium. On a cool, crisp Saturday, September afternoon. Kelsey's first broadcast, and you're doing a great job. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. I'm having a blast. You are going to get more girls in the booth. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you are a trailblazer. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> we might even get Miles Holiday in the booth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know we love you, Miles. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> third and 16 from the 45. Parker's in the gun. Big third down for the Birds. Carey trying to get the stop here. They're going to hand the ball off and play a conservative. Matthew Quatman goes around the left side. And I kind of like the play. They're going to put their defense on the field and let them do the work. Yep, absolutely. Be safe there. See if Matthew, because he's done it before. He's picked up these sure. huge plays. So give him the shot. Be safe here. We already up. Two yeah. scores, so. Bring up fourth and 14, and Matthew, excuse me, and then, uh, you know, they're going to try to pin him deep. So yep. uh, let's see if uh, young Mr. Brady Parker can uh, put one down in the coffin corner and pin the Blue Devils deep. 5-16 to play. Clock continues to run. LCC leads 13 to nothing. Parker gets the ball. And a nice high punt that hits at about the 25. And a nice reception there by Trip Phoenix as he gets to the 35. And Trip Phoenix catches it with his hands where he was leaning forward. Yeah. A very dangerous reception, but he does make something out of it. Yeah, dangerous reception, but, man, he's dangerous when he, he gets out is. in the field. He is speedy. Yes, we'll see what is. the flag's going to be here. That's right. we got another flag down, so we'll see what the call is here. So five minutes exactly to go until halftime. Lima Central Catholic is 13 to nothing. And did they pick the flag up? I don't believe. Yeah, I believe they yeah, picked the flag like up. It. Yeah, no flag on the play. So here comes Kyler Bose in the carry offense. Bose is in the gun. He's got number 24, Eli Steen, off to his right shoulder. He's going to look to pass. He's under pressure. He steps up in the pocket on the left side. He's going to keep it himself, and he gets to about the 38-yard line for a gain of about three yards. He doesn't, does not, excuse me, does not get out of bounds, and that'll keep the clock running. Yeah, but that was a smart decision by Kyler Bose there. He looked out. It looked like he was looking for Trip Phoenix over here, who was covered. So he saw there was a little bit of opening to the left, went that way, and was at least able to manage a, a yard or so out you, of it. You know, when 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 carries on offense, Kelsey, and Kyler gets to run the ball and the ball gets it. You just feel like they could score at any time, but yeah. credit LCC's defense with keeping him in front of them, and they talked about it before the game. We have to tackle, and they've done a fantastic job they of it. They sure that. have. So Trip Phoenix is off to the right side. They're going to hand the ball off to the big guy as he rumbles and bumbles, and he is taken down by number eight, Carson Hefner. What a tackle. He met big number 24, Eli Steen, in the hole, and they collided, and down goes Steen. Yeah, that was a fantastic tackle by Carson Hefner there. I mean, there's like 60 pounds difference between oh the two. Oh, my You couldn't tell there. Carson Hefner did not back down at all. Nope. What a man. <laughs> that was awesome. 354 to go. That will bring up third and four from the 42. Bird's defense is playing stout tonight. Bose is under center. He's going to hand the ball off. And what a hit. What wow. a tackle. And I got to get a number on the birds there. Looks like. Was it? 
Caden. Number 30 for yep. the birds. You're Kaden right. Caden Falky. Caden Falky me meets him in the middle of the pile and just drives him back. And that'll bring up another punting situation for the Blue Devils. Yeah, you mentioned it before, but I have to say it again. This LCC defense is playing fantastic. Th they're playing fast. They're playing free. I just love the way they're playing right now. Yep. So carries in pump formation, fourth and six from the 41. They'll drop one deep, and the ball is received at about the 35-yard line, and he tries to get around the 40, and he'll be taken down at about the 39-yard line. Lawson Flores with the catch, and the Birds with 3.01 to go. We'll try to put some more points on the board. Cord cutters can access WSN for free with an antenna on 44.2 or our app at $8 per month. Sign up at app.wosntv. I need to cut the cord, Kelsey. This <laughs> I have. I use it by antenna, but I live really close to the station, <laughs> right. so it works, and I love it. You've got that wire ran right to the station. Yeah, dish. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Able to catch all the local games. It's, I highly recommend everybody. They're good watches. 3.01 to go here from Spartan Stadium. Danny over at Kelsey Beimer. LCC leads 13 to nothing over the Cary Blue Devils. And they're trying to put some more points on the board before halftime. Parker's in the gun. He's got a single back off to his right shoulder. Two receivers to the right. He's got one in the slot. He'll hand the ball off. This is Matthew Quatman. And Matthew Quatman, not much of a gain there at all. And a great job by the Cary Blue Devils. Tackle by number seven. And that is... Kaysen Sherman on the tackle. Yep, Logan Summit was in there as well. Good job by the defense. They got to stop LCC here. Can't afford to let them put any more points up on the board. So this will be an important possession by the Blue Devils. See what they can do here. And, and really, when we break this game down, Kelsey, we look at the carry defense. They haven't played a bad game tonight. No. LCC has scored one offensive touchdown on a fluke play yep. and one interception by their defense. So when we look at both defenses, they played fantastic tonight. You're absolutely right. So Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right, one on the slot. He's got a single back off to his right shoulder. He's going to take the snap, hand the ball off to Quatman. Quatman goes across the middle for a gain of about three. And I believe LCC is content with let, you know running that clock down because it's going to go under two minutes here on second and nine. Yep, I agree with you there. I think if it ends like this and they go into the locker room halftime, they're happy with the way this first half went. Carey's got three timeouts left. Lima Central Catholic's got two timeouts left. Clock continues to run with 1.49 to go. And a quick first half, Kelsey. Really Really quick. 45 minutes wow. here, and uh, we are just really rolling. Parker's in the gun. He's got one receiver in motion. That's Michael Quatman as he goes off to the left side. He'll go back to the right side. <laughs> He's everywhere. He's like a water bug. He's just yeah. everywhere on the field. And Coach Paldy's going to take a timeout. With 125 to go until halftime, we'll step aside. The LCC T Birds lead 13 to nothing. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium, where with 125 to go in the second quarter, Lima Central Catholic T Birds lead 13 0 over the Cary Blue Devils. Parker is in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's got a single receiver to the left. He looks across the middle. He's going to throw down the middle, and he's got a guy out there, and it's a reception made, and an unbelievable reception by Michael Quatman. He goes up above. It's Quatman and Quatman right now. Oh, this yeah. Unbelievable, Kelsey. The catches they're making. That was fantastic. I looked out. I saw Quatman. I was even pointing at him. And next thing you know, Brady Parker is throwing it right to him. Fantastic catch. Yeah, Kelsey, we've talked a lot about the LCC uh, defensive line and how well this offensive line is keeping Brady Parker in a clean pocket. He's under zero pressure. They sure are. Yeah, fantastic. Giving Brady the time he needs to find those passes. So Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to roll to the right side under zero pressure. He throws far down the right side, and it's going to be picked off. Was he in bounds? When he, and no. The, res, the official says he was out of bounds. Boy, that was a close play on the other side of the field, so I can't tell you if his toes were in or not. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was a close one. I think Lawson Flores was kind of slowing down there and didn't know Brady was going to throw it to yeah, him. Yeah, and I think from the looks of it, it looked like Brady Parker was trying to put it in the only place that Lawson Flores could catch it was on the sidelines. Right. And the Cary Blue Devil defender made the catch, but unfortunately he was out of bounds. Right. So that was a close one. Boston Ritter almost had the interception there. Unfortunately, he was out of bounds. That would have been a nice momentum shift for the Blue Devils. And there but you saw Brady Parker with a 35-yard strike. That was effortless. He just yeah. looks really good right now. He sure does. 
So Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to the right, one to the left. He's going to hand the ball off to Matthew Quatman. He gets there he all. Goes. There goes Quatman up to 25. Quatman's going to take it into the end zone. The birds score again. Matthew Quatman, three touchdowns tonight, two offensive, one defense. Matthew Quatman. The Quatman just in general. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They are looking fantastic. Elsie, Brady Parker, both Quatmans, the line, everything. They are looking fantastic tonight. With 50 seconds to go until halftime, the LCC T-Birds take a 19 to nothing lead, and Kerry is in shock right now. And I love the way the T-Birds are playing aggressive football right now. That offensive line just opening up huge holes yep. for the Quatmans. So Matthew has to catch his breath because he's got to kick an extra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. Get him a drink right. of water. <laughs> so they'll await the snap. Snap is back. Hold is good. Kick is up. And it is blocked. Oh. No good. So with 50 seconds to go, LCC leads 19 to nothing. want to thank our first down sponsor, Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevy and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We're proud to call this home. And our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Dolphins, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. So, Kelsey, 50 seconds to go until halftime. you got to believe Carrie has got to get something, a little bit of momentum. Uh, remember, LCC got the ball in the first half, so Carrie, you know, if they can get something here, maybe a little momentum. Yep, absolutely. And thinking back to that last possession there, LCC had three penalties that we thought was maybe going to stunt their right, go right, up the field a, a little point. bit. But no, then they didn't let it get to them. They drove right down the field. A lot of really good plays, passing, running. Uh, this they're being so well-rounded in this first half. We take a look at the uh, what Kerry's done this year. They lost their opener to Hopewell Loudon, 27 to 22, and then they lost to Galleon, 14 to 8. Lima Central Catholic they lose their opener to Shawnee, 33 to 19, and some would call a surprising game yeah. for the Birds. And then they come back with a big time win over Delta St. John's, 14 to 13. And you can just see the confidence right now in the T-Birds as their game plan tonight has been absolutely excellent. You sure can. And these those two Kerry losses, those aren't against bad. Teams. No, so look, the Northern 10 is a great conference, right. and they are big and physical, and you're right. Those are two really good teams. Yeah, and they were close games, too. Hopewell Loudon is always a state power, oh, and yeah. uh, we see that year in and year out. Uh, in Galleon, I've been to Galleon. I did a, a playoff game up in Galleon a couple years ago. Oh, really? Beautiful facility. Great place to do football games. So Matthew Quatman will kick it off with 50 seconds to go. And the Blue Devils stand at the 10-yard line as they await the kick. And a little squib kick, it was picked up by the up man at the 25, and he'll take it out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. So with 46 seconds to go, you just wonder if Kerry's not going to try to get some momentum here and try to get a score before the half or maybe just take a knee. So we'll see what the Blue Devils decide to do with 46 seconds to go. Yeah, I would think he at least gave it a couple of shots down the field here. Well, they've thrown the ball quite a, a few times yeah. tonight. So Kyler Bose is, is uh, an athlete that can get around the perimeter, out on the boundary. And let's see what, uh, what he can do here with 46 seconds to go. So Bose will be in the gun. He'll be flanked off to the back side by Eli Steen. He's got a receiver to the left and a receiver to the right. Bose is going to roll to the left side, looks to pitch it, and Steen takes the pitch at the 30. He's at the 35 to the 45, and a big-time gain by Eli Steen for a Lima Chevy Cadillac first down, and that's exactly the play they needed for a first down, a gain of about 13 yards. Yep, I love that play call. Everyone's thinking pass there. they got to get down the field, pitch it out to their star running back. He's able to break free a little bit, get 13 yards, and run out of bounds, stop the clock. Perfect play call. Yeah, so the Blue Devils are on the move at the 40-yard line with 39 seconds to go. I love the aggressive nature right now of the Blue Devils trying to get a score before halftime here. Bose is in the gun. Steen's off to his left side. He's got trips to the left side, a single receiver to the right. He looks across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He's trying to avoid the rush. He's going to throw to the left side, and he throws it out of bounds. So Kyler Bose under heavy pressure, and a great job there by big number 73 for the birds, Jaden Williams had put the pressure on him. Yeah, Kyler did a great job of just getting out of danger there, getting the ball out of bounds. But at, in this moment, I feel like you guys have to look at their tight end, Bryce Puckett. He's 6'7 on the outside there. He might be a good one to go to. Yeah, he, he is a big target, 6'7 tight end. 
you can see him stand above the yeah. rest of the crowd there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll bring up second and 10 from the 32-yard line. Bose is in the gun. He's got Eli Steen off to his right shoulder. He's got two receivers to the left, one in the slot. He's going to go Steen in the middle. Eli Steen takes it up through the middle and a nice gain of about six yards, and that's where he'll be gang tackled by a host of T-Birds. Yeah, that was a nice gain by Steen. I think this is the most we've been able to see him move up the field tonight. And, of course, uh, Carries took a timeout there. Yeah, they'll take a timeout. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 a month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. And have you heard of the three wise men, Kelsey? Myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock. Each week we discuss local football matchups, Buckeye football, and sports all across the state of Ohio in our newest WSN podcast, Three Wise Men. Yeah, that's a fantastic podcast. I'm lucky enough to be able to sit in the background and run the audio for that each week. So if you're a big fan of high school football, high school sports in general, you guys even talk about Ohio State a we little do. bit, talk about volleyball, all high school sports. That is, that is a, a great yeah, listen. It is a great, great time. I really enjoy that. Uh, I, I enjoy that as much as my radio show. Yeah. And uh, Nick and the production crew, including yourself, yep. do a great job of editing and getting that out to the public. So enjoy that if you if you can, because uh, we put a lot of work into that. Yeah, I think that's posted on YouTube. It's yeah. on Spotify as well. So lots of options. 23 seconds to go. Second and four from the 47. Carry on the drive at the 47-yard line. Kyler Bowes is in the gun. He's got Eli Steen off to his back shoulder. He's got a receiver to the right, a receiver to the left. He's going to roll out to the left. He's going to is he going to pitch it or keep it himself? He's going to keep it himself, and he is hit hard by Carson Hefner. Boy, Carson Hefner's had a heck of a game tonight, Kelsey. He sure has, yeah. And that, he was trying to decide what to do there. Should I pitch it? There, there wasn't too many good options there. Great job by the LCC defense. So that'll bring up third and four, and there's a timeout on the field with 12 seconds to go. So big, big day of college football. The NFL opens tomorrow. Kelsey, I know you're an NFL fan, as oh, I yeah. am too, so really excited about my Cleveland Browns. You're excited about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sure uh, another, am. another season of NFL football on the horizon. Yep, I'm so excited. Yeah, I was at the Wapak game last night, and I have uh, Saquon Barkley on my fantasy team, so I was trying <laughs> to keep an eye on him. He got me 35 points. So. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I got home. I, we had been on vacation, and I got home, and I caught the tail end of the uh, of the game in Brazil, which was was a great game. Yeah, I don't have Peacock, so I couldn't watch it. I, I didn't know we had it until my oh. wife said, oh, we have Peacock, because there apparently I had, I had ordered it for a college game last year, so oh, yeah. we still kept it. So. There's too many options I'm a now. junkie. i, I got to have yeah, all those yeah. subscriptions. I have an NFL Sunday ticket, but I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So fourth and four from the 47, so a big-time play right here. If LCC can get a stop, they're up 19 to nothing. Bose is in the gun. He's got Eli Steen off to his left shoulder. He's got a receiver to the right, receiver to the left, man in motion in the slot position. Here comes Steen. He's going to roll to the right. He looks down. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to oh. be taken down. So it'll be a turnover on downs as a great play by the Birds as they gang tackle, and that'll stop the clock at six seconds to go. And with six seconds to go from the 48-yard line, do you throw it up in the end zone or do you just take a knee here? What are That's the birds going to do? That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> I'm pretty aggressive. I think I'd throw it down yeah, as far as I might could. Might as well give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, the other birds have been on fire this this half. That's for sure. I feel like Kerry was in that last position just kind of starting to get it open there. It's unfortunate that they're yeah, at the end of the I, second quarter. I thought Bose maybe should have uh, pitched the ball. He had an outside yeah. back on the left side and he decided to keep it himself. Yep. But a great job by the LCC defense as they gang tackle him yeah. and take him down. So here come the Birds with six seconds to go. They've got two receivers off the right. Brady Parker is in the gun. Let's see what he does here. And there goes a man in motion. They're going to pitch it back. And he gets around the 50 to the 45 to the 40. And that's where the clock will run out. So after one half a play from Lima Spartan Stadium, the LCC T-Birds lead 19 to nothing. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. And halftime just about over here at Spartan Stadium. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer, Lima Central Catholic leads 19 to nothing. And Kelsey, we take a look at the first half, and it's all about the 
defensive effort of LCC. They were just fantastic. It sure is. Yeah, Carey's going to get the ball coming here in the second half, and you really think they got to come out and get some sort of drive put together, right? Yeah, and, and on offense for the Birds, the Matthew Quatman show. Two touchdowns on offense, one on defense. He was just tremendous, and we talked about it off air at halftime. The, the kid in the open space on this turf is just electric. Absolutely, yeah. You give him space. And we're also talking about uh, Brady Parker as well, even Michael Quatman. They're all really playing fantastic. I mean, I don't know if there's a spot on this LCC team right now that I can say hasn't been doing a great job. Yeah, and we talked about the LCC T-Birds the first two games of the year, and the difference between tonight and those two games is night and day. And yep. that, that's a credit to Coach Scott Palti and this staff. They've really got these kids ready to play. And for, for Carey, it's, it's just they can't get anything going offensively they tried to pass the ball a little bit they you know they had a pick six they've tried to run the ball again the defensive line for LCC has just really stopped the run right and yeah carry the running games that's really a bread and butter so I'm gonna wonder yeah. if they're gonna see that more in the second half here so we are underway here in the third quarter LCC kicks the ball off it is fielded at the 10 yard line this is number six Lucas Smith Hayward as he goes to about the 30 yard line and he is hit immediately there by number three for the Birds, E.J. Jones, the senior, 185-pound senior defensive back with a nice play. Yeah, fantastic tackle there. Carey's going to start about the 30-yard line, so we'll see what they can string together here. You know, you know we, we, we've called a lot of names tonight, Kelsey. When you talk about kids on special teams and defense and offense, the Birds have put an effort all around this game tonight. They sure have. So here come the Cary Blue Devils down 19 to nothing. This is Kyler Flores. He's got two running backs off to his right. He's got a man in motion. That's Trip Phoenix. And oh my goodness, big number 24, Eli Steen, was hit immediately by number 73 for the Birds, Jaden Williams, who's played a heck of a game tonight. Oh, he sure has. Yeah, we've talked about the line on both sides has been doing fantastic on the Thunderbirds. And yeah, Jaden Williams had him immediately. Great tackle, great play. Look, Jaden Williams is a 5'11", 220-pound sophomore. You better get used to that kid because he's going to be around for another two years, and he is fantastic right now. He is owning that carry offensive line. He sure is. Yeah, there's a lot of really talented talented sophomores on this LCC team here. Yeah, I was going to say, LCC's got a bright future. Yeah, they sure do. So here's Bose. He's under center. He's got Trip Phoenix off to the right. He's going to keep the ball himself. And he gets a nice gain to the, 40, to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50. And there you see Kyler Bose with his biggest gain of the night. And he's got the carry Blue Devils in good position at midfield. Yeah, I bet that feels good to get some open yardage there, run down the field. And Kyler Bose, he runs. He's had 17 rushes on the season's 44 yards. So it's not new to him. Yeah, so here we see, uh, Carrie, you said it best. This is their bread and butter, the yep. offensive line, the run game, and uh, they're going to stick with it here. Yep, I think so. 11.06 to go here in the third quarter. LCC leads 19 to nothing. Danny Hobart, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium on a beautiful Saturday night here in September. Bose is in the gun. He's got a back to his left shoulder. He's going to hand the ball off. This is Steen as he goes through the middle. He gets to the 40, to the 35, and big Eli Steen chomping up yards in the carry Blue Devil offense, getting excited now as their fans are on their feet as their best drive of the night is beginning here in the third quarter. Yep, and that's what happens when Eli Steen gets some open field. He's just trucks people down. Xavier Purnell for LCC did a fantastic job getting him down there, but a couple more, he looked like he could have broken that and been to the end zone. you got to believe Coach John Mershman challenged his kids at halftime to, hey, look, we got to run the football. We got to, they challenged that offensive line, and so far they've responded. Absolutely. Yeah, something had to change there. And here's Bose as he hands to Steen. Steen goes up the middle, and he is dragging people. Eli Steen, a nice four yard gain, and the Blue Devils running, running, and running. Yeah, they're driving here. This is, yeah, one of the best positions they've put together on the night. The running's working for him. Tonight's first down sponsor is Lima Chevy Cadillac, the area's premier Chevy and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. And St. Mary's, call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. So 10-14 to go, carry on the drive. Steen is off of Bose's left shoulder. He's got a man in motion. He's got two receivers to the right. Bose is going to keep it himself. He gets a nice block, and it gets a pickup of about three yards. And there he saw Eli Steen lead the block there on the perimeter, and Bose picks up about three yards. Yeah, great tackle by Caden Falky and Matthew Quatman there. 
clock continues to run here in the third quarter. 9.46 to go. We had a 6 p.m. start tonight, so the sun's still out. And they've got the lights on here, but uh, only because the shadow's on the one side. This is a beautiful facility here at Lima Stadium, it their Spartan really Stadium. It really is. They've done such a great job with this, and they're building the aquatic center off here to the right side of yep. us, which is going to be fantastic. Here's Bose in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Steen. Steen goes up the middle, and big Eli Steen, the momentum continues as he picks up close to it. No, he's got another Lima Chevy first down, and the Cary Blue Devils are on the march. Yeah, every time I, I see um – Eli Steen get the ball there, man. I just get nervous for the LCC defense because <laughs> he's a big guy, and once he gets going, oh, my God. I'm, I'm just waiting for him to break one through. Well, him and Jaden Williams have had some collisions tonight. That Those are two big kids, yep. and uh, they've met in the middle a few times. So here comes Bose directly under center. He's going to go back to Steen, and Steen has stood up, and not much gain there, if any, and a great job there by Michael Quatman coming up from his safety position to land a tackle there. Yep, really good job. Yeah. And Michael Quatman gave up about 60 pounds to <laughs> Eli Steen. <laughs> yep, he sure did. But that was a great job. LCC knows that Kerry's going back to their running, so they're trying to shut it down here. 8.35 to go. LCC leads 19 and up, and Kerry desperately trying to get on the board here with any points. Bozo going to center. He's going to hand the ball off to the first back up. And a oh, nice wow. run there by number 40 for Carey. That is Dash Puckett. He was the first man up in the triple eye there, and he gains about 10 yards on the carry. Yeah, that was just a huge cluster in the middle, and Dash Puckett got going, and he just kept going, going, going. The, the uh, crowd pushed him there, and he got a decent gain there. So they're at about the – they're going to say the ball is on the nine-yard line. 7.54 to go. Carey's kept the ball the entire third quarter here. A nice drive as they went to their bread and butter, the run game. Bose is going to go back to the same guy here, number 40 for the Blue Devils. And that is Dash Puckett. And Puckett has become an effective back as he takes it to about the five-yard line and Carey's knocking on the end zone. He sure has. Yeah, that Carey line there seems to be winning the battle at this point. They're going up the middle and they're getting decent yardage each time. Boy, I'll tell you what, Kelsey, if Carey can put it in the end zone here, you want to talk about a momentum shifter. The home crowd is really quiet. Yeah. And the Carey kids are excited now as they're at the five-yard line trying to take it in. Yep, absolutely. First and 10 from the four, 7.23 to go. Dash Puckett directly behind Bows. They're going to hand the ball off to the second man in, and that's number 48 for Carey. It's Mace Puckett. Mace Puckett. So the Puckett connection there, and they're lining up in the triple I right behind Kyler Bows, and they are just chomping up yards right now as they sit on the – they're calling it the four-yard line, but it looks like it's about the two-yard line. Yeah, it does. That'll bring up second down. Yeah, and if I'm carried, if it ain't broke, don't fix I mean, it. The, yeah, I absolutely 100% agree with you that they're going to run the ball here. Bose goes directly under center. He's going to go to Steen. Steen goes off the right side, and he goes into the end zone for a touchdown. The Cary Blue Devils drive the length of the field, and they close the gap at 19-6. to What a drive. What an answer by the Cary Blue Devils. That was fantastic, and that's really what we were expecting to see from Cary this whole night. Yes, that is a great point, Kelsey. You're absolutely 100% right. We thought we'd see that from the get-go. They come out in the second half, and they put it all together. Yep. So the extra point will be attempted by Nathan Gary. Snap is back. Hold is good. Kick is up. And it is good. So with 6.38 to go, the Cary Blue Devils put together their best drive of the night. They score, and it's 19-7. to We'll be back with third quarter action right after these messages. Back here at Spartan Stadium with 6.38 to go in the third quarter. The Cary Blue Devils put together an impressive drive 
as they march it down the field and they close the gap at 19 to 7. And Kelsey, that was vintage carry football, run, run, run. Yep, that's what we were expecting to see all night, like we said earlier. And that was that was what carry needed. They need to come out and put some points on the board. Hopefully, a little bit of momentum shift back their way. Let's see how LCC responds here. Yeah, the 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 pocket connection. And Eli Steen just chomping up some yardage there. And this now for a carry, if they can get a stop here in the way that offensive line moved the T-Birds off yep. the ball, this is a big-time setup here for the carry Blue Devils. Yeah, that will be huge. Kind of a pooch kick there as it drops in the middle of the field, picked up at the 22-yard line, and he is going to be taken down at about the 28-yard line. And let's see who took that kick there. It was the up man but a great job by the Blue Devils. Yeah, that was a great tackle there by Dawson. Birchnaw was in on there. Number th number three, EJ Jones, uh, with the ball carrier on there. So LCC will get their first possession of the second half. They lead 19-7. to seven. What a great first half for Brady Parker in the Birds offense. They did have their own way basically the first half. They sure as did. They controlled the ball most of that half, and that offensive line did a great job of keeping carry at bay. So Parker comes out in the gun. Quatman off to his right side. He's got two receivers off to the right side. He's going to hand the ball off. And there goes Quatman off to the left side, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50. And he'll be taken down at midfield and thrown out of bounds. Matthew Quatman doing it all. He's already got three touchdowns tonight. Why not another one? Right. He's just going to keep going all night. Fantastic tackle there by Logan Summit. Kerry, despite the big gain, did a good job. They had... Three people out there ready for him, but, man, Matthew Quatman is having yeah. a night. Kelsey, Matthew Quatman right now is the best player on the field, and yes. that's no slight towards anybody else from LCC. It's just that young man's night. He is just in a zone right now, and they want to get the ball to him as much as they can. Exactly. He's just so well-rounded. It seems like he can do anything, literally field goals, kicking, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I love the stutter step he made at the 50-yard yeah. line, which was fantastic. So there goes one man in motion. They're going to pitch the ball back. This is Lawson Flores. He gets around the 40 to the 45 to about the 42, and that's where he'll be taken out of bounds. Lawson Flores with a nice carry, and he takes it for a gain of about five yards. If that was Boston Ritter and Dash Puckett there on the tackle. So a great response right here by LCC as Carey drove the ball down the field. LCC trying to respond to negate the seven points that Carey has on the board. They lead 19-7. to seven. Brady Parker in the gun. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got a single receiver off to the right side in single coverage. Carey shades the safety over to the single receiver. And Parker bobbles the ball, gets it outside to Michael Quabman, who gets it across the 45 and carries people, no pun intended, carries people to the <laughs> almost to the 40-yard line. And there you see Michael Quabman with the reception, and that's going to bring up a huge third down here. About third and three from the, they're going to call it the 42-yard line. Yeah, and they were lucky to get a couple of yards there because, like you said, Brady fumbled that uh, the ball there at the beginning, and, yeah, that could have been bad. So at least it was they were able to get a little bit out of nothing. Third and three from the 41. 5-14 to go here in the third quarter. Brady Parker is in the gun. He's got to back off to his left. He's going to hand the ball off to Matthew Quatman, and Matthew Quatman is hit immediately in the backfield, and a huge stop by the carry defense. Exactly what they needed, Kelsey. Mace Puckett, number 48, right through the line there, got him in the backfield. That is exactly what they needed, just like you said. My goodness, this carry team is playing fired up right now, and they get the stop they need at midfield, and they're going to get the ball back. And don't look now, but Trip Phoenix is back in punt return, and he is super dangerous with the ball. He sure is along with Lucas Smith Hayward, who's Absolutely, not bad yeah. himself. He's, re <laughs> he's really good. So Brady Parker will punt the ball away, and they need a good punt here to back the Blue Devils up. Parker from the 45 gets a nice punt off, and it's going to hit at the 15, and it's going to bounce, and they are going to back it all the way. Beautiful. He, oh, it went oh. into the end zone. Oh. Yeah, they're going to say a touchback. Oh, my Man. goodness. They had it pinned at about the two-yard line, and the recovery man rolled into the end zone. By, it looked like he just stumbled and fell into yeah, the end zone. that's what it did look like. That's unfortunate. They had him down on they the one-yard line You're there. You're absolutely right. But that's that'll, okay. Yeah, that'll put the <laughs> ball at the 20. And uh, here comes Carey. Yeah, let's see if they get that running game going again. 
413 to go. Danny Hobart, Kelsey Beimer on Kelsey's first broadcast in the booth, doing a fantastic job tonight for us. Going to take the take the Lima Media by storm, your radio, <laughs> your TV, your everywhere, your podcasting. Who knew you'd be this famous? Yeah, I didn't. It's, it's all thanks to you guys giving me the opportunities. There's Kyler Bowes in the gun. He's got Steen off to his left shoulder. He's going to hand the ball to Eli Steen right up the middle, and the grind continues. Steen picks up about two yards. And this is the thing here. I've had St. Mary's the last couple of weeks, and they do the same thing. They will be content with a two, three-yard gain yeah. because they just keep coming at you. Right. And then they'll hit something over the top, or they'll get to the boundary. And that's what Carrie's been doing right now. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like I, like you said, I would be happy with those couple of yard gains there because every once in a while, it seems like Steen or Puckett breaks through and gets these big yards. So if it works, keep going, keep doing it. And it worked for him last possession. That's right. Bose is in. He's got Trip Phoenix behind Eli Steen. Let's see what they do. They're going to go Trip Phoenix, who tries to get out, and Matthew. Quatman is blocked on the boundary and a great job by the rest of the birds defense and Michael Quatman comes up and cleans it up Matthew Quatman met him in the backfield and he got pushed away but he's Michael does a great job of pushing him out of bounds he sure did yeah that was a fantastic block by Eli Steen there for trip and I, that's what saved him from getting uh, stopped in the backfield. Well, you knew when they put Phoenix behind Eli Steen there was a possibility they were going to try to use Steen as a blocker and that's exactly what they've done. Yep. So that'll bring up third and eight from the 22. So a big third down play here for the Blue Devils and a huge momentum shift here if the Birds can get a stop. Bose is in the gun. He's got Steen off to his left side. He's got two receivers to the right. He's going to throw the ball. He looks downfield. He's under pressure. He's going to roll with it. He's at the 25, and he's going to be taken down at about the 30-yard line, and it's about two yards short. And you wonder if they'll gamble and go for it and I don't think they've made the decision yet here. Let's yeah. see what they do. Yeah, that's a tough one for Coach. Pretty far back in their own territory there. If you don't make it, you're Kelsey, giving LCC really good. But yeah, it, it I looks think like they're going to go for I it. I think they are too. This is a huge gamble by the Cary Blue Devils. And now they may want to try to draw them off sides. It right. is fourth and two. Let's see what they do if they go to a hard count. Exactly. Oh, they're going to go. Here goes Steen up the middle, and I think he got it I as he goes he across the 30. And the officials say it is a Lima Chevy Cadillac first down. Yep. No hesitation there, but the Blue Devils, I love the play call. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, <laughs> and, yeah, I was going to say, if you want anyone running up the middle there, they got the people to do it. And there is an LCC T-Bird down. It looks like that is number eight, Carson Hefner, for the T-Birds as he is holding his arm as he comes off the field. And... We're going to see he gets attended to, and both sides go to their sidelines. So we'll step aside, take a break. We'll be right back after these messages. We're back here at Spartan Stadium as Carson Hefner was attended to and helped off the field. And the trainer is taking care of him. Let's hope he's okay. He's had a nice game tonight. He sure has. Young man's played well. So here come the Blue Devils, first and 10 from the 31. Bowles goes under center. Eli Steen is all the way back, and they're going to keep it. He's going to throw across the field. He's got a man out there. The reception's made at the 40, at the 45, to the 50, to the 45, and he takes it all the way to the 42-yard line, and a pitch and catch number 48, Mace Puckett with the reception as he rumbles and bumbles down the sideline. That was such a fantastic play call. They've been having to run, run, run. We're going to swing around on this play. Mace, or yeah, Mace Puckett wide open, able to get a decent amount of yardage there. I love that play call. Kelsey, the momentum from the first half to this half. The Cary Blue Devils look like a new team it's right unreal. now. They've gotten back to their identity of running the football. Yeah, momentum has completely switched. So here comes Bose under center. They'll go Eli Steen right up the middle, and Steen gets about two yards, and they'll be content with that to make it second and eight from about the 41-yard line. Did you know you can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month? Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Also, you can join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as we discuss local football matchups, Buckeye football, and sports all across the state of Ohio. WSN's newest podcast, Three Wise Men. So third and seven from the 39, Bowles goes under center. 
He's going to hand to Eli Steen. He gets a block as he rumbles and bumbles, and he picks up close to a first down. Kelsey, is he right at the stake? I think he's going to be about a half a yard short. Yep, just a little bit short. That's so impressive. <clears throat> Man, he gets going. He's surrounded by people, and he – he just keeps going, keeps picking up <laughs> yards, drags the, the defenders with him. Well, I can promise you this. They went for it on the 29-yard line. I can promise you they're going to go for it oh, on the 34-yard line. 100%. With, with, uh, with about half a yard to go, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Bose just keeps it here himself. Uh, you don't want to hand the ball off, maybe have a miscue, but uh, we'll see what they do with Big Steen in the background. They may fake it here. Well, let's see. They've got two receivers off to the left side. Steen is off Bose's right shoulder. And Bose is going to hand to Steen, and Steen is going to – oh, it's oh. going to be close. What a big-time play by Matthew Quatman, who's had the game of his yeah. life. Why who, not? Who else? <laughs> Matthew Quatman. And they're going to have to measure this one. Yeah. That was real close. So that will end the third quarter. My goodness, this game is flying by after – Three quarters of play. The LCC T-Birds lead the Cary Blue Devils 19-7. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after these messages. Back here at the start of the fourth quarter. Danny Hobart, Kelsey Beimer. Cary Blue Devils fourth and two from the 34. And oh. they jump. And a false start. That's going to back them up to... About fourth and seven, and a huge play, Kelsey. With a team that doesn't throw the ball a lot, fourth and seven, this is going to be a tough play. Yep, that one hurts. They, they were in a prime setup there for what Kerry likes to do, just these little bump and runs, a couple yards there at a time. Now they're back to seven yards. So probably a pass here, but we'll see what they decide to do. Fourth and seven from the 39. Kerry down 19-7 to seven to start the fourth quarter. Bose goes under center. He's going to hand the ball off to Steen. Steen gets a block. He gets the first down and more. My goodness, Eli Steen. And you saw the hole open on the right side of the line, Kelsey. What a great job by that right side. That was fantastic. I thought that they almost had to go for a pass there, but no, they know what they do best. Give it Eli Steen on the right. A hole opens for him, and he's gone. Yeah, and you, you got to believe that the coaching staff for Kerry thought they saw something in the first half where they could throw the ball. But yeah. here we go. They're right back to what they do good, and they're really good at it. Yeah, they sure are. And it's showing. They're, the momentum's completely shifted, and they're doing a great job. So here come the Blue Devils. Bose is in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Steen. Steen goes down the left side, and he is getting huge chunks of yard. He picks up nine on that carry, and he pushes it towards the goal line. Here come the Blue Devils with 11.25 to go in the game. Eli Steen. This is what I was expecting doing all the prep this week. Eli Steen, Eli Steen. And, man, you can see he's scary going up yes, the middle there. Yes, he is. There. And we talked about him. He doesn't have a lot of speed, but he just carries people. And, yeah, he sure does. And he's he, – Look, the offensive line for Kerry's done a much better job this half than yeah. the first half, and they are opening some big-time holes. That will bring up second and one from the 13. Clock's under 11 minutes here in the fourth quarter. Bose is in the shotgun. He's got Steen off to his left side. He's got a man in motion. He's got a single receiver, Trip Phoenix to the right. They'll pitch it back to Steen. Steen finds the corner, and he rumbles and bumbles to about the five-yard line, hit at the six-yard line. That's going to be another Lima Chevy first down, and the Blue Devils are first in goal. Yeah, Falky in with a couple others there on the tackle. So with 10.39 to go here in the fourth quarter, the Cary Blue Devils, if they can put it in the end zone, they'll be down less than one score here. It's 19-7. to Bose goes under center. They're going to go to the second man up, and that was Puckett. And Puckett goes to about the five-yard line, so a gain of maybe one. Yeah, and they're finding a lot of success with that three-back lineup they there. They are. Yeah, absolutely. Mace Puckett doing a great job of being the second man up through that offensive line. And they hurry to the line knowing that the clock is under 10 minutes. We're at 9.59. Bose goes directly under center. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man through, and they're pushing, and that is number 40, and that oh. is Dash Puckett, and they're saying the ball gets scooted out, and the, the officials haven't made any calls here. And the officials are getting together, Kelsey. No, no, there wasn't one official that made any call. No. They all stood around and looked at each other. 
Um, and LCC seems extremely confident they, that the ball is there. Very much do. Coach Pulte on the sideline is telling his kids to just get away from the officials. But there wasn't one official made a signal that the ball was loose. No. So I think they're going to get together here and talk. This could be a huge, huge game changer here Massive. with Kels or excuse me, with Carey <laughs> on the uh, verge of putting it into the end zone. I didn't. Get, who was that on the carry there? That was Puckett for that was Puckett? yeah. That was Mace Puckett on the carry, and they're going to say LCC ball. Oh, that is massive! Wow, what a momentum changer as the LCC T-Birds get a fumble, and Carey's head coach John Mershman is really upset on the sidelines. When the when the, the when the play happened, Kel, not one official made any look like there was any no. kind of movement. When the pile got separated, LCC came up with the ball, and their kids were really excited. Right. But I couldn't see anything in that pile. Yeah, there was a huge pile. We couldn't see anything up here. But yeah, the way the LCC kids ran out of there, it was almost like certain that they had the ball. So All right, let's see what happens here because LCC is going to go first and ten from the nine yard line. Kel, or Carey's got them backed up here. Yeah, Kerry defense has to come out hot here yeah, and get a stop there. Parker's in the gun. He's got Qualman off to his right shoulder. He's got a single receiver and single coverage on the right side and the left side. They're going to hand the ball to Qualman as he finds a hole and gains about three yards off the left side of that line. He was so close to being through there. There was a he hole was. and just shut right before he got through it. But both teams are really fired up right now. This is an exciting game Absolutely. to watch. Matthew Quatman does a great job of hiding behind that big LCC offensive line yep. and really finding holes. Parker's in the gun. He's got a receiver off to the right side in single coverage. They'll shade the safety on that side. There goes... A man in motion for LCC. They'll throw across the middle, and they've got him in the seam. There he goes, down the middle, to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, and he takes him down at about the 32-yard line. Michael Quatman. It's Quatman, Quatman, Quatman everywhere we go. That was fantastic. He was so close to being gone there, but who's the one carry defensive man they had on him? Trip Phoenix, probably the fastest player on the team. I was going to say the, the only team. guy that could have caught him was Trip Phoenix. Right, yeah. but man, what a great pass. He was wide open right in the center of the field. Fantastic pass by Brady Parker there, and that's what they needed. Great play call as they took – the LCC put a man in motion, and the linebacker followed him, and it kept that middle open. So a great play concept by the T-Birds, and they'll go first and ten from the 29 with 8.49 to go. Parker's in the gun. He's got Matthew Quatman off to his right shoulder. He's got a man in the slot position and two receivers off to his right. They'll hand the ball to Matthew Quatman. Hesitates and looks for a hole, and he finds one, and he gains about five yards. Great job of Matthew Quatman of being patient and waiting for the hole to open. Yep, and Carter Bame on the tackle there got him just by the ankles, and if he won it, he would have got substantial amount more yards, maybe even been in the end zone. So great job by Carter there. LCC taking their time on this drive at the 24-yard line. Clock continues to run. We're at 8, 11 and counting in the fourth quarter. LCC leads 19 to 7. Danny Holbrook, Kelsey Beimer from Spartan Stadium, as the sun's settling down here on a beautiful fall Saturday afternoon. LCC trying to put this one away. Parker's in the gun. Matthew Quatman's off to his right side. They'll go Quatman off the right side. He finds a hole. There goes Quatman through the middle as he tries to get to the boundary. And he's looking for the end zone. And he'll be taken down at about the seven-yard line. Matthew Quatman shows that explosiveness as he gets to the boundary and tries to swing it in. But he's taken down short of the end zone. What a great cut to the right there. He juked out left or out right and was able to get a decent amount more yards there. And Boston Ritter on the tackle there. He has six on the season so far. And, uh, yeah, great play. What a response, Kelsey, I by know. Lima Central Catholic after Carey dominated the third and most of the fourth quarter. They get the turnover, and what a response. That's what I was just going to say. The, the min momentum switches here, but, man, it, it wasn't looking good for LCC. They got that turnover, and now they're using it to their full advantage, looking to get another score on the board here. So here comes Car excuse me, Brady Parker. <laughs> <laughs> he hands the ball to Quadman. Quadman finds a hole, and he scores. Mm -hmm. Matthew Quadman with his fourth Touchdown of the night, three on offense, one on defense. It's been his night. Birds lead 25-7. I don't even know what to say. This has just <laughs> been, oh, my gosh, Matthew Quatman. Oh, man, Look, I'm, I'm literally at a loss for words. I'm just going to say this right now, Kelsey. 
on the radio show Saturday if Matthew Quatman's name is not brought up for for the positivity. I'm telling you, something's wrong. Oh, it'll be 100%. <laughs> it's going to be the Matthew Quatman show. <laughs> and LCC is going to take a timeout. With 7.14 to go, we'll step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Seven fourteen to go. I'm a Central Catholic. Scores another touch. Well, Matthew Quatman scores another <laughs> touchdown. He's got all four on the night for the T-Birds. And it looks like, uh, are they going to go for two here? I think they are. I think they are going to go for two. Try to stretch that lead a little bit. Parker's in the gun. He's got Matthew Quatman off to the left side. He's got a receiver off to the far left side. One in motion. They're going to go Quatman up the middle, and he falls short. So the two-point conversion is short. So with 7.14 to go, Lima Central Catholic leads 25-7. to And now, Kelsey, Carey is in a hurry-up situation. Uh, you just wonder if they had scored that touchdown to cut that lead to less than one score, how this game would turn out. But what a response by Lima Central Catholic. I mean, you, you want to talk about showing some determination. This T-Bird squad tonight has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, just looking back at the possessions here, it's unfortunate because Kerry had two turnovers that both led to touchdowns, which gave LCC the lead that they have now outside of Matthew Quatman's fantastic effort tonight and performance. So, Unfor where the things have went bad for Kerry has been in bad spots, but LCC has taken those turnovers and <laughs> taken advantage yeah, of them. You're absolutely right. What a performance. But I haven't uh, seen a performance like Matthew Quatman's in some time now. Nope. And, and not only that, but Michael Quatman and, 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 and Brady Parker have just been fantastic. And that whole defense – I'm just going to single out everybody for LCC. What a game plan they had, and it's been fantastic all night. Yeah, the team effort for LCC here, offense, defense, has just been unreal. So Lima Central Catholic will kick it away, and Trip Phoenix is back deep alongside J.J. Schneiders. No, no, excuse me, number six for the Lucas Smith Hayward. I was reading the wrong roster there. Two dangerous return men, and they would love to return one quick and try to get back within two scores of this game. Yeah, a big return would be really big for Carey right now. Nobody's left this game. It's been an exciting oh, game. It's Both been a the, great game. A lot of folks on hand tonight with the great weather and a Saturday night game. So they'll kick it right down the middle of the field, and that'll be Smith Hayward with the ball on the left side. He goes to the 25 and gets up to the 30, to the 35. About the 33-yard line, that's where the Cary Blue Devils will take over with 7.06 to go. He was able to escape one tackle there. I'm trying to see the number of the person who did it. That was number 13, I believe, which is Dakota Gerdeman. I want to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. So the Cary Blue Devils down 25-7, to seven, needs some magic here with 7.06 to go. Kyler Bowes goes under center. He's got Steen in the backfield. Trip Phoenix is off to the left. He's going to throw the ball as he throws down the middle, and it's picked off. Picked off at the 40-yard line. That's number 30 for the Birds. That is Caden Falky, and it goes out of bounds, and the Birds are back in business. Another turnover. Fantastic effort by the T-Bird defense. And you can see Caden Falky out there right now. He is pumped up after that. <laughs> it, it was thrown directly to him. Oh, there's a flag. Oh, there's a flag on the field. It looks like it's in the area of holding behind the line of scrimmage. So let's see what the play or the call is. Not real sure what the call is. Holding on LCC. Holding, defensive holding, maybe? I think that's what they're calling. So that'll take away the penalty. Uh, or, excuse me, that'll take away the interception. Caden Falky with a huge play, but it'll go for not as a defensive holding penalty goes against the T-Birds. That's really the lifeline that Kerry needed. It's unfortunate oh, yeah, for LCC, absolutely. but, yeah. Pushes the ball to the 44-yard line. I just want to give a shout-out to Caden Falky, though. He is really, I'd say, the heart of this defense here. He does so good right there in the middle in the linebacker position. He does a lot for this defense. Oh, no, the T-Birds have the ball. Oh. 
Now I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> and I think everybody in the booth is confused because they called it. Well, Lima Central Catholic has the ball. And I don't know that anybody knows an answer here in the booth. The yeah. Lima Central Catholic folks off to the right side. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, we don't know what happened there. And we but do not know what happened either. You're right. So Caden Falky gets that interception then. Yeah, so they're going to they're credit <laughs> Falky with the interception. But all indications were that the ball was going back to carry. And right. here we set. And uh, now Lima Central Catholic with the ball after the interception with 6.43 to go. And a timeout here. You can join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as we discuss local football matchups, Buckeye football, and sports all across the state of Ohio in WSN's newest podcast, The Three Wise Men. Also, you can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 a month. Don't download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. So Lima Central Catholic looking to put this one away with 6.43 to go. As they've got the ball at about the 41-yard line. Still not understanding what the call was. Yeah. And uh, we'll try to figure that one out here. But I'm as confused as anybody, and I, I watch a lot of football. <laughs> yeah. So do you think LCC tries to run clock here or goes for another I score? I absolutely think they try to run clock here yep. with 6.43 and a, and a running tandem of the Quatman brothers. And I, I, I would be surprised if they throw it, but I've been surprised before. And there's Brady Parker as he's going to keep it himself, and that's a good play call as he picks up about three yards and the clock continues to run, 6.35 to go, and Carey's going to take another timeout here. That was a good tackle there again by and Carter Bain. Been saying his name a lot tonight. Carey's got one timeout left. There's a timeout on the field. We'll step aside here in the booth with 6.35 to go. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Well, 6.35 to go. The Lima Central Catholic T-Birds lead 25-7. to 7. It looks like on the play where Lima Central Catholic intercepted it, the holding call was after the interception was made. Correct, Kelsey? Yep, that's And that's why think. Lima Central Catholic continues with the ball. The penalty was after the interception, so they'll stick with that. Brady Parker's in the gun. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got a receiver to the right in single coverage. He's going to keep it himself and run right up the middle. And nice spin move by Parker as he gets away from the pack. And he's going to pick up a Lima Chevy first down. Unbelievable move by Brady Parker. And there you see the athleticism of the 6'3 sophomore. Oh, yeah, the mobility. That was fantastic. His spin move was close to breaking there. But, yeah, really good by Brady Parker there. Yeah, so to answer your question, I believe they're going to run the ball here, and they're going to run it effectively there. Yep. They're going, what they're doing is they're going to force Carey to take that last time out as they've only got one left. Yep. And as soon as they use that one, it's game over. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah, really unfortunate for Carey on the night. Three turnovers, and that's really swayed this game outside of LCC just playing fantastic in themselves. Yeah, Coach Palti right now is leaning on that offensive line as, he, as they've done all night, a fantastic job. And Parker's going to keep it himself, and he's going to pick up another two to three yards, and that clock continues to run. And let's see. Yep, Carey takes their last final timeout. Yep. That's their final timeout. We're going to take another timeout. We'll step aside with 5.59 to go. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium, where with 5.59 to go in the fourth quarter, LCC leads 25-7. They've got the ball on the 30-yard line. Kelsey, if this lead holds up, Lima Central Catholic will move to 2-1, and one, and they got to feel good about themselves after that 0-1 start to win back-to-back -back games. Really good. Yeah, this has been a really great showing by the LCC Thunderbirds, probably their best of the season, I would say. So here comes Brady Parker. He's got two receivers to the far right. Matthew Quatman off his right shoulder. We're at second and eight from the 30. They're going to throw the ball as they get it out to the right side, and they're going to pick up another Lima Chevy first down as that is right at the marker if they call it a first down. And let's see what they say. Boy, that's going to be awful close. Really close. They may want to measure that yeah. one. Let's see what they call it here. No official word yet. And, boy, it looks like it's across the marker, does it not? It to does. You? From our angle, it yeah, does. It sure does. And they're going to say an official timeout. From our angle, it looks like it's an easy first down for the birds. But I believe they're going to have to measure. Let's see what they do it looks here. Like it. And I'll tell you in just a second. 
Yeah, Coach Palti is going to pull his guys back in, maybe talk some game plan while they measure this one. They're going to, oh my goodness, oh. it is inches short. Inches short. Well, I got a 6'3 sophomore quarterback that I'm just going to sneak the ball right there yep. on third and one and uh, put this game away with 5.52 to go, and Kerry has no timeouts I left. was thinking the exact same thing. We've been seeing Brady Parker keep the ball here. He's no uh, – he rushes the ball a lot, 16 rushes, 93 yards. He has a touchdown on the season rushing, so I trust him to get a couple inches here. Brady Parker is only going to get bigger and stronger, and he is going to be a fantastic – he's a really good quarterback right now. In he the is. next two years, he's going to be as good a quarterback as there is in this area, and uh, we'll be talking about him for a long time. If this lead stands like it is, Carey will fall to 0-3, not a position they've been in in recent years no. as they've been a fantastic program, but uh, still at 0-3, you've got to believe they'll get it together the way – as physical as they are. Right. So here's Parker. He's in the gun. He's got Matthew Quatman off to his right side. He's going to hand it to Quatman. Quatman hit immediately, but he may have got it. He only needed inches. Uh, so it looks like he may have got that. Tackle there by number 48, Mace Let's Puckett. Let's see how they call it. And they're going to say first down. Yep. So a Lima Chevy Cadillac first down for the T-Birds with 5.40 to go, and they lead 25-7. to Yeah, so now it's just a matter of running the clock, right, Danny? You're gonna they're, they're, you're gonna take every bit of that play clock. You're gonna run the ball. I don't see any reason to throw the ball. And uh, even if you turn it over here after four downs, you're still giving Carey zero time to work. Not a lot of time. Right. But uh, let's see what they do. They'll go Quatman off the right side, and he wiggles and jiggles to a gain of about <laughs> six yards. My goodness, he's talented. And that's going to take that clock well under five minutes. We're at 5.02, and the clock continues to run. Yeah, and Kerry has no timeouts left. So even if they turn the ball over, and uh, they, you, we know that they've seen success running tonight, so that's going to be hard to drive up the field. Absolutely. That'll go second and four from the 16. As they continue to take their time, play clock down to 19. Brady Parker doing a great job of letting that play clock run down. And he's going to snap. It's 10 seconds on the play clock. Brady's watching it. And they snap it with five seconds to go, and he's going to keep it himself. And that will get the clock to 420 with third and four. So a big third down play here. Here is here. You hear the LCC crowd saying, take your time. Take yeah, your yeah. Time. <laughs> that was a dad. I can tell that. That Absolutely. was a player's dad. Take your time. <laughs> he knows football. He knows what's here. Oh, yeah. What's going on. Brings up third and two from the 14. Pick up this first down, and uh, there's Parker in the gun. He's going to hand the Quabman. Quabman met right in the middle, and not real sure if he picked that one up. Boy, third and two. And let's see how they call it here. Huge play call here. And they're going to do a measurement. They're going to yep. have to measure again. So they'll go officials timeout, and they'll bring the chains out on fourth down, or is it first down? We'll have to see. And they're going to say it was a first down. So they do okay. not bring the chains out. Not real sure what the official timeout was for, right. but they rule it another Lima Chevrolet Cadillac first down with 3.29 to go. Play clocks at 19. I mean, even if there were a turnover here, I mean, Carey's still three possessions behind, right? Right, right. So, yeah, that's going to be a tough one for and them. Brady Parker is in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Quatman, and he is securing that ball as tight as he can. Yep. And that will put the clock under three minutes. Don't want any fumbles now. They've had a really clean night so in terms of uh, penalties and turnovers. There's just that one play where they had three penalties, or one yeah. possession, and they still went down and had scored a, a touchdown. Had a couple false starts. And, yep. uh, but they really, they, they've, they've really responded tonight with a, from the adversity that they showed a little bit of in the first half. Uh, yeah. they, and they just were fantastic every time they'd get a little adversity, and they, they find a way to, to do something positive. 
So Parker is in the gun. He's got a, a running back off to his left shoulder. No receivers out. And they'll go up the middle and keep that clock running. And I believe that is Michael Quatman who sneaks up through the middle. Yeah, he got a decent, decent way up through that big pile there, too. Put it at about the four-yard line. And I believe that is Matthew Quatman. Excuse me on that. That will put the clock under two minutes at third and three from the four-yard line. Parker in the gun. Quatman's off to his left shoulder. They've got no one out far to the left or the right. Clock continues to run. Play clock's at 10. And if they pick up the first down here, then they'll just take a knee. you got to believe so. Yep, I would think so. so uh -oh. oh, I fumbled. The ball's on the ground. And that was could have been disaster as Parker picks the ball up. Uh, the play clock's at 40 seconds. It'll run under, well under a minute before yep. they will have to call a timeout to make a decision on what they're going to do here. My goodness. Uh, I don't know if Quatman and, and Parker ran into each other or what happened on that snap there. but uh, Yeah, it was a little hard to see. Just saw the ball pop up, and thankfully they were both back there and <laughs> were able to drop on it. Exactly. <laughs> so the clock now is under one minute here in the fourth quarter. Play clock's at 10 seconds. And Coach Pulte will take the timeout here as the clock winds down. And that is exactly what he does. So 50 sec 49 seconds to go. For, excuse me. Uh, clock is still running. It should have been stopped. There it stopped, should, but yeah, maybe they'll should, add a little yeah, I was back. Say that it should be back at like 48 seconds. Yeah, so what do you think Coach Pulte does here? I mean, I don't know if it makes a huge difference. If you try for the field goal, that would put it up to 21 or just go for the touchdown? I'm not sure. What do you think, Danny? Well, with 43 seconds to go, Kerry has no timeouts left. I, I would I would probably I, – I, I don't know that I'd risk a field goal right now. Yeah. It could get blocked. It could be taken back for a touchdown. True. There's so many things that could happen. I, I, I honestly would keep the ball in Brady Parker's hands, yep. get him to roll out, uh, just tell him, look, if you can't get to the end zone – uh, stay in bounds, get down, keep the clock running. Of course, the clock's going to stop with the possession change. Right. Uh, but Kerry's only going to have less than 35 seconds to go. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's the smartest play as well. We'll see if that's what they do yeah. here. Either Brady keep or Quatman run, I would guess. So Parker's in the gun. Quatman's off to his right shoulder. Let's see what the birds do here on fourth and six. They're going to go Quatman as he goes across the right side. And did he get the first down? Boy, he was close. Yeah, it's a little He's hard to tell from close. our angle here. The officials are pulling people off the pile. Let's see what they decide here. If it's a first down, game over. And no word from the officials yet. And no, they're going to say he did not oh. make it. So Kerry will get the ball back on the change of possession with 36 seconds to go. So look, nothing, no, no harm. The right. LCC did the job of keeping the clock moving, and uh, Kerry has the ball down twenty-five to seven with thirty-six seconds to go. Yeah, not a ton they can do here, but maybe they can string a couple plays together here in the end just to leave the game on a little bit of a higher note. But honestly, it's it's been a great effort by both teams here tonight. So Kyler Bose goes directly under center. He's going to hand the ball off to Steen, and he fumbles yep. the ball, and the ball goes down to the turf, and. Is that going to be the last play of the game? Yes, that'll be the last, unless they hurry up. The play clock's at 38, game clock at 22. And Carey in no hurry to snap the ball. Yeah, I think Steen got his own fumble recovery there. Yep, and that'll do it. Carey is not going to snap the ball. And that'll do it from Spartan Stadium. The Lima Central Catholic T-Birds win a big matchup between them and the Cary Blue Devils, 25-7. Lima Central Catholic moves to 2-1 on the season. Cary falls to 0-3. Kelsey, your final thoughts on this big-time win for the Birds? Oh, this has been a fantastic game on both ends. I think it really comes down to, well, first off, LCC played a fantastic game, offense and defense. Cary, unfortunately, had three turnovers that led to two scoring uh, plays for the Thunderbirds. So unfortunate for a carry there, but they still played a great game. They showed a little bit of their running game there. Eli Steen looked really good. And 
This team's 0-3, but I see them doing good things going forward. Yeah, and I thought Matthew Quatman was fantastic tonight. Four touchdowns for the youngster, three on offense, one on defense. He was everywhere for the Birds. Yep. And that'll wrap it up. The final score from Spartan Stadium, the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds 25-7 over the Cary Blue Devils. For Kelsey Beimer, Jacob O'Neill, I'm Danny Holbrook, and we'll see you next week. You've been watching High School Football on WOSN.